This was my first time back at my favorite Goodwill since our road trip to Arkansas. They had decorated the beginning of the hard goods section in Halloween decor. At first I thought that votive holder said Bob and then I realized nope it says boo. <laughs> I stepped back to give you a look at what the Halloween section looks like. And then they also throw in a little Thanksgiving and harvest in the same area. They'll put in decorations, they'll also put in costumes. You see the boots, you'll see shoes over there, sometimes hats and wigs. I've sold items similar to this before, but this had the paint was chipping on the back. So I put that down. I thought that maybe these were hobbyist pieces, but they were former store pieces. So I put those down. I wanted to see what the glittery part was in the snow globe. And then I noticed that it was from TJ Maxx. So I wonder if they got a little donation from TJ Maxx. Isn't that cool looking? It was bats and black glitter. Here's a Harry Potter clock. And for some reason, they thought that outhouse salt and pepper shakers that were souvenirs from Maryland would, good, would be good Halloween decorations. You never know. On an end cap, I noticed this Himalayan salt plate. I've never used one of these before, and, and I don't use that. I don't see myself using that in my own cooking. And it was very heavy, so I decided I didn't want to even deal with buying that and shipping it and it might break. Here's the end cap on near the brown section. This little figurine is so cute. It's been here a while, but it has a big chip on its ear. It was made in England. And here were some salt and pepper shakers in a bag. It was a little squirrel and an acorn. And all of my relatives that I had just seen in Arkansas, they're from Arizona, so I thought that was kind of funny that, look, here's a little cactus. The Lucy and Me Bears are still there. Here is a spoon rest from Hawaii. I carefully get it out. And I noticed that it also had a brown colorway. I've seen other things made in Hawaii with this brown colorway. I thought that maybe the things on the top of this angel's head were, if you, if you, if she was a light, you could plug it in and she would glow, but that was just de decoration. Here is a Ramertoff that you could cook a chicken in. My mom, I believe, still has her Ramertoff. So I thought that was cute that it was in the shape of a chicken. Here's a little stoneware bake and serve set that I thought was cute because it didn't, it, it had strawberries on it, didn't have any chips or cracks on it. So I finally got something to put in my cart. Against the back wall is also more holiday things. So this looks like it's more of the Thanksgiving fall section. Along with the Halloween masks on the bottom. These were a bag of not too vintagey, I would say 80s, 90s figurines of bears. But for 99 cents, you got a lot of bears. This I thought was one piece, but it was two. This was a hobbyist piece. I did like the colorway and I probably would have picked it up even if it is f almost fall and this is for Easter, but there was a big chip on the bunny's ear and I didn't feel right selling something with such a big chip on it. Then I found this other figurine. It'll go into focus here in just a second. And it is marked on the back, which I had never heard of before. And then I found in my research that this is a mold similar to a Holland mold. So this was a hobbyist piece that someone painted.
this was cute with bears on it, but I felt it was missing a lid or maybe a candle went in there. This was made in the USA, but I have some other Apple items that have not sold yet, and I don't want to add to my Apple inventory until those things move along. Then next to the Apple Bowl, I saw this huge bag of necklaces and stamps, and I immediately thought of my friend who has the youth group that she could figure out what to do with these because the teach former teacher in me knows that, hey, we'll figure out something to do with this. And for 99 cents, how could I not get it? This bag of yarn was a great deal. And I found a pad of paper, sketching paper that hadn't been marked in that I picked up for my daughter who loves to draw. These are little candle holders that you can slide down a candle and they will keep your candles looking cute. And this little, this piece here was most likely from a magazine. And then I removed it from the baby doll's face. Boop. This tray was ginormous and I, at the time I thought, oh, I'll, I'll run my finger along the side of it so you can see how, long, how big it is. But looking now, you can't tell. It was probably over 20 inches long. It was very big. And then I noticed another Rommertoff and this one said Rommertoff. I like the colorway on these, but this one had a chip on the lip, so I put it back. And I noticed that this studio art piece matched the other studio art piece mug, so I paired them together so someone would notice them and hopefully grab those. Look how nice. They have a nice shape to them. Then these were some vintage, most likely soup mugs for $1.99 each. And I then I noticed the tile underneath the mugs. And it was a tile that was made in England of Anne Hathaway's cottage from Stratford upon Avon. But unfortunately it had a big chip right there. So I put it back. Then I recognized that this was Westmoreland glass that someone had painted. And at the time I didn't think it had any chips to it. And then I was worried that the paint would come off when I took the tape off, but it didn't. But right by my thumb, I didn't see it in the store. Some of those beads are have been chipped off on the lid. It's signed 1979 on the inside and one of the feet has chips on it, so I'm not sure if I'm going to list it. I thought this was Eldorth pottery, but it was not marked, and it also had a big crack on it. You put this on a candle that's in a glass, like a Yankee candle, and this was a different type of shade also, but with fruit. And let's see what else do I find. Oh, here were some flowers that someone had made. Maybe we're, we're selling them at one time and now they're donated. This was made by Oneida. It said stoneware salad and dessert plates and this box was heavy. So I didn't even look up comps or any, just the weight alone I knew would throw people off from wanting to buy it and ship it. Here's my foreshadowing that you saw earlier. You're gonna see a lot more of those boxes. This one was not signed and someone had filled in the, or had drilled holes in it and then filled the holes back up. See, here's another one. Which one's your favorite? Cause you're gonna see a lot of them in this video. This is False Graph Yorktown. I grew up with this pattern. It's very common in this area. So when I do see it, I look to see some unusual pieces that you normally don't see. And then hidden in there was an, a studio art mug. I liked how this had a real big handle, but there was only one. 
thought it was nice. And then I see it, oh, it says Opa, so it's for your grandpa. <laughs> so I put it back. So that's a little specific. This was a Holland mold piece. And then I realized they were trying to sell these for $10 at one time before they were donated. Then I noticed this. I had never seen this before. And if you can find mustard and ketchup, they sell really well. So I did pick up the mustard because I hadn't seen it. And it looks to be, it had never used. The pump is clean. I like that mug because it had an Asian look to it. The pump is clean. The inside is clean. This was a honey jar. They don't sell for too much crazy money. So... I put that back. I did like this. This is a basket that at one time would have had a wicker handle. I thought it was neat looking. Hadn't seen one of those before. Look, another tissue box cover. I told you there were going to be a lot of them in this video. This, I, I don't know what this is. There was not one hole to get anything out. Maybe you put your Kleenex that that was coming up next in there. I don't know. There's not one hole in there. Not on the top. His, not in his pants. I don't know. Look, there's another one. Then it became a game. I was looking for new items for my shop, but also how many tissue box covers can I find? And there's another one. It's right there. They were nicely done. There were a lot of them. I like this mug because it had a little touch of orange, and I like the color orange, but there was only one. So I left it there. This is a spoon rest. And then I spied these two little tins and they were from Disney World, Epcot. One was Germany, one was the American Experience. They were made in America, which I liked. So I decided to get both of those and fun fact, I went back today and I found a third one. So I have three of those. There's another tissue box cover. I was surprised what these were because they were two separate and they feel like the Pyrex refrigerated dishes, but they are not marked Pyrex or Fire King or anybody. The one green one that you can't see the top of, it does have a little bit of chipping to that zigzag. I just thought these were neat and I had never seen them and it surprised me that they felt like the Pyrex glass. I had to check the bottom of this one out. Oh, wait, and check the bottom of that one out. So I did take those. This mug was beautiful. Probably should have picked it up, but it was $7. This Goodwill tends to mark anything that has studio art pottery that's signed is $7. So. I didn't get it. There's some frogs. There's a little minor frog collection you're going to see here. This little planter up here I thought was cute for a little succulent and it had a hole in the bottom, which is always nice, good for drainage. And it was only 99 cents. So I thought it was sweet. So I so I took that. I've decided that toothbrush holders are the item that kind of creeps me out in the Goodwill stores. I don't like to touch them. Just the fact that they used to hold toothbrushes kind of, kind of gross. Here's the rest of the frog collection. These were in the silver section and it has a little funky.com. They were like those ugly dolls, that brand of dolls for kids that are called monster dolls or ugly dolls. And then this rooster, for some reason, was in the sil silver section. I thought, oh, his beak is going to be chipped. And it wasn't. The gold is, the paint is worn. But there's not one chip on this guy. I thought it was really neat. I thought it would look neat and farmhouse decor. You have a chicken farm. I have no idea what these are. Do you know what these are? I don't know what these are. Two of the feet had holes in them. One hand has a little peg in it. So I thought, well, maybe they're hooks, like the holes you put screws in. 
I think they're wall hooks, but I don't know. They were different. This is me trying to figure it out, and that's me displaying them for someone else to figure it out. I think they were wall hooks. This, oh, okay, once upon a time, we used to have photographs, and we would put them in these books called photo album. I'm <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> this caught my eye because it's uh, Mary Inglebright fabric and it's a photo album and you normally don't see photo albums anymore it didn't have a price on it um it was kind of fun looking through it so <laughs> i was being sarcastic <laughs> there was one photo someone missed but these mugs i i like the look of them and i liked them so much i put them in my cart there's a little card update It was a nice full cart this trip back then on the Christmas section this is a party light brand snowman there's not one chip on that thing and I think if you don't find chips on something and this is so cute and lit up it's very very sweet so I thought someone's gonna like this Christmas is coming where can I put it I can put it right here. There you go. Perfect. Then the last aisle I always go down is the white aisle. And there was one more Kleenex box. I hope you enjoyed this trip to the Goodwill. Here's what I bought.